Hi everyone, welcome back to the Casual Watch Review channel. This week's episode, I'm going to look at awesome straps for the Black Bay 58. The Black Bay 58, one of my favorite watches that I have ever owned. And it's similar to the Speedmaster that I owned. It just looks awesome on a multitude of straps, but it is overwhelming when you first buy one where you should get the straps from. So what I've got here is a couple of different examples. We've got examples of NATOs. We've also got examples of some awesome handmade leather straps. So I'm gonna show you my picks for best straps to go with your Black Bay 58. So let's flip the camera around and dive straight in. Right, so let's dive in here. We've got quite a lot of straps to go through. I'm gonna put a link to all of these straps in the description down below and any associated coupon codes. A couple of these straps were kindly sent in by viewers, so I'll tell you which ones those are, but just assume that the others are all reviewed copies that were sent in by the manufacturers. Let's start with this Toxic NATO strap sent from the personal collection of Chris, who's a friend to the show and our resident military expert, so thanks for sending this in, Chris. The reason that I chose this one is the hardware and also the coarseness of the material here, the nylon, I think gives the watch almost a military, a sort of vintage military look to it. Also, it's surprisingly comfortable and durable because, because it would have been a thicker uh, material. You can see that I've been wearing it quite a bit, but none of the holes have uh, warped or anything like that. Here we have it on the wrist, my wrist 7.2 inches, very comfortable, enough of a little overhang here to tuck back through. Next up we have a NATO strap or in fact a whole range of NATO straps that are based on vintage rally cars. This is a company called Champinato, I'll leave a link in the description down below, it's run by a good friend to the show. We have vintage Peugeot here, this one is inspired by vintage Porsche and of course we have the Martini Racing. If you're a racing fan and also a watch fan then definitely check out the website. This is my particular favourite, it's the Audi colours. I think the red really plays with the red pip that we've got at the top here on the Black Bay 58. Here we have the Audi Racing one on the wrist here. These are very affordable, they're around the $12 to $13 mark. Nicely made NATO straps, quite durable but what really is the the key here is that these awesome color ranges that you don't really find in, in any other NATO straps, all inspired by those vintage rally race cars. Next up, we have the, the Mora strap. This one is a slightly more refined, more of a seatbelt type NATO. I really like the way that the, the shininess of the black here really plays with the matte of the dial. These are a seatbelt NATO style, very comfortable, high quality hardware, they also have a single piece for the buckle here at the end, so there isn't a failure point if the pin was to go in the end of this buckle here. There's plenty of extra here to tuck back through. Gives a real smart, elegant look. If you're looking for a watch strap that might compete with the ones that Omega sell, this one is considerably cheaper. This was kindly sent into the channel by Ben at Mora Strap, so a big thanks to Ben for that. Next up is a strap I've had for a while, but it is still one that they currently sell, and this is the Watch Gecko. This is the, the real Bond strap, or the vintage Bond strap, I think they call it. And I think it looks awesome on this Black Bay 58 because when you see this strap in the Bond film with that undersized... Uh, lug width versus the Rolex that he's got on there. There's definitely a lot of similarities between this watch and that Rolex watch. These watch gecko straps, these Zulu diver straps, really very well made. This is this is nylon, sort of in between a seatbelt NATO and then the more coarse one that we saw on the Toxic NATO and the Champinato one. Very comfortable. I just love the combination with the Black Bay 58. Next up, the last of the NATO straps, although I think you'd call this a single pass um, strap here. This is from Crown and Buckle. And when I did the unboxing, this was the this is the number one question I get. Where did I get this strap from? As you can see, it just passes through one time and then the adjustment is actually here. The tail is just long enough to fit through that second keeper there's not really enough room to tuck it through there but what you could do is adjust this part if you didn't like that little overhang 
But again, very comfortable. It doesn't add a lot of extra height to the watch because there's no secondary piece of um, nylon underneath there or secondary piece of fabric. Next up is this Vanguard rubber strap. This was kindly sent in by Vanguard themselves to the show. So big thanks to uh, Vanguard for sending that. I've done a full review of this strap. What I'll do is I'll put some footage from that review. Reason I, I'm not putting it on now is it does take some finagling to get it on. It's it's a very secure fit once it's on there. So it does take a while to get it on there. And I mentioned in that video, if you're not confident, then uh, please take it to a jeweler to get this fitted. But once it's on, it's a very good fit. The, the, the ends are curved and there's also a, a piece of... Um, sort of plastic in there as well so it stays firm towards the watch this bit doesn't warp if you're looking at one of those high quality rubber straps that you often see on rolex watches then this is how you can achieve that look with this strap i think these are around the 130 dollar mark made from a, a high quality uh, vulcanized rubber so these next straps are from my favorite leather strap maker i've reviewed him a number of times on the channel and this is uh, Mikola from Man Cave Leather. He makes these in his workshop in the in the Ukraine. And he does an absolute fantastic job of them. Now, he sent me two. In fact, he sent me three in. And I'll show you the third one towards the end. Unfortunately, the third one is not one that you can purchase. I had it custom made, but I'm excited to show you that one. So here we have a, a leather one padded. I like this because it's got that sort of oil tanned look to it. And Mikola hand makes every single one of these straps. So you'd have to check with him on these various models because once he gets the leather, he makes the strap. So he's got an ever revolving list of models that he makes. But this just looks awesome. The Black Bay 58 looks incredible on brown and tanned straps as well. I'm not a huge fan of it on black leather straps just because there's a lot of black on the dial and the bezel on here as well. There we have it on the wrist. This oil tanned gives a lot of different texture to it as well. Next up, we have this beautiful brown Horween alligator strap, the Man Cave Leather Predator strap. This, will, this was sent to me in December, but this will be the last new alligator strap or exotic leather strap that I'm able to review on the channel because the import of exotic animal skins has actually been banned now in California. So that's a, a, a little note to anyone that lives in California. Oh yeah, here we have it on the watch and it just looks awesome. The brown really complements the gold and the gold of the hands and the gold on the bezel here. Let's just try it quickly on the wrist. Uh, it certainly gives it a very nice high quality feel to it as well i think these retail for about 150 dollars these handmade you can actually chat to uh, micola on facebook let him know exactly what you're looking for in the sunlight that almost cognac brown is unpadded so the flatness is a, is almost a single piece again really emphasizes the watch and then finally here is a strap that Man Cave Leather, McCall at Man Cave Leather, kindly made me for a recent upload. I reviewed a homage to a Citizen Bullhead chronograph, and I just had to have this strap. If anyone's seen the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood film, Cliff Booth, Brad Pitt's character, has a very distinctive Citizen watch on this cuff-style strap. And McCall took the images from that film and kindly made me this. Now, you can't currently buy one of these from him, but I'm sure if we have enough people that pester him about them, I'm sure he would, he'd start making these, but he's done a fantastic job. We've got the brown, again, almost like a cognac leather, dark brown. I think it gives it a really nice vintage look. I think here you can see it kind of laid out, very simple construction, but um, very effective in the look, but it looks even better on wrist. Here we have it on my 7.2 inch wrist. I just really like the look that it gives uh, gives this watch. Real vintage, really nice look. And this watch, as it a lot of it is, this strap has a lot of it is unfinished. I think it's just going to look better and better and better with age. Now, before we finish up here, I just wanted to let you know about one other strap, which I've not shown on here because I've actually sold it. 
I know a couple of people asked me about the strap, and that was the strap code metal bracelet. I applaud strap code for having a go at making a metal bracelet for the Black Bay 58, because the one that Tudor sell is outrageous that they want $800 for it. But the strap code one, although they've Although I applaud them for making a Black Bay 58 strap, it's not one that I personally liked. I bought the Oyster strap, and I didn't really like the look or the feel of it on the Black Bay 58, so that's why it's not in this lineup. Well, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments section down below which was your favorite strap out of all of these that I reviewed. Also, if you're not listening to our new podcast, Casual Watch Talk, head on over to your favorite podcasting app. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time on the Casual Watch View channel. Thanks, guys. Bye.